So this is a question. This is an uh, introductory question. Thank you. Uh, toy cart is pulled a distance of 6.0, uh, distance of, uh, let me just uh, introduce symbols I'm going to use. Distance of the meters, or just distance D, in a straight line across the floor. The force pulling the cart has some magnitude. Let me use letter F. And it's directed at some theta above the horizontal. And it's asking, what is the work done by this force? And um, so I always like to draw a diagram to make sure I understand it, understand the situation correctly. So I have some toy cart that's on some floor. And so it's being pulled. So it's going to move and eventually end up at some place that's uh, D distance away. I'm going to draw the distance from front to front of the toy cart. OK, it says there's a force pulling the cart. And it's directed some angle above. So it, it, it's a, this is the force. It's directed at angle theta above. Um, yeah. And so as you are drawing this picture, I hope you realize that uh, this is not the only force acting on the toy cart. That's why while you are applying the force in this diagonal direction, the cart is actually moving in a horizontal direction. You, you know, if you do force analysis, you'll figure out, oh, the vertical component of force, it allows you to reduce the normal force and all that. All good. Um, so, but so, but co comprehending the situation is why it's good to draw this uh, picture. Otherwise, it's kind of uh, easy to forget, easy to misunderstand. So, why that's why I'm drawing the picture. Now, having drawn this picture, this is where it's uh, important for you to realize the definition of work uh, given in this very precise way. So if you took physics 10, especially with me, uh, you might have seen this definition of work. That work is equal to force times displacement. And the, the thing that you now have to be careful, now that you are in calculus-based the general physics, is um, you have to pay attention to mathematical properties of objects. This force and displacement they are vector quantities. And somehow, you are doing a product here that's resulting in work, which if you read through the chapter, is a scalar quantity. So, you know, in physics 10, we kind of try to pick situations so that we avoid <laughs> worrying too much about these mathematical properties of objects, quantities. Now we do. So we have a product that involves two vectors that turns that product into a scalar, a quantity that has no sense of direction. And um, this is the material that we covered in chapter two and that the hint is referring to. It's the dot product. So we covered dot product in chapter two, kind of, maybe. A little bit. <laughs> and the, 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 the that product is to define it this way. This is the physics definition of that product. If you have two vectors, A and B, and you know they don't have to be drawn this way. I'm just drawing them with a the tail at the same point for convenience. Then the that product is defined this way. When you do A dotted to B, then the scalar quantity, so it's a product that takes two vectors into scalar. It's a, a mapping, sorry, let me not get too abstract here. Uh, product that gets, gets you scalar, and this scalar is made up of these three parts. First two parts are the magnitudes of the vectors. So you need a product of the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B. And the third thing is the um, kind of the, the information about the directions of vectors that you need. And here, the only information that you need is the relative angle between them, theta. Uh, so this angle is uh, one nice thing. It's uh, independent of the, what kind of axis you define. You could have crazy axis defined like this. And that angle theta will still remain the same angle theta between the two vectors. 
and the dot product uses that information, and that's the third part of the dot product, A, B, cosine theta. So we use a bit of a convention where if you just have the symbol without the arrow, that is the magnitude of the vector. Symbol without the arrow, that is the magnitude of the vector. That allows us to write a bit of a simpler expression for the dot product. So that's the dot pro definition of dot product that you hopefully recall from chapter two. This is not sounding like a foreign language to you. <laughs> so, so work is defined using this dot product. Definition of a work is force as a vector, dot product with the displacement as a vector. Or the formula that you should use is the magnitude of force times the distance d times cosine theta. And this is where you do want to be careful. Make sure the theta is the angle between the, the, these two vectors. So as far as the math you have to do here, the math is simple. It's a, so force, 17.5 times d, uh, 6 meters times. And I know how to use my calculator. I put in the angle first and then cosine um, equals. So 63.19, and I use the SI unit, newtons and meters. So that should get me the SI unit of energy joule. So 63.2 should be correct. So 63.2, and we're done. So, so yeah, I, I want you to, so it's not a difficult question. I wanted to cover this because it, um, it concerns this idea of that product that, um, that it's, a, it, it's a very important concept. It's a, you know, when you see it, it seems simple and you know, it is simple, but um, if you're going, to, if you become math or physics major, that product or inner product, something you are going to see to the graduate level coursework. So it's good to have a good starting point right now. And by the way, uh, we have other ways of doing the dot product, which I'm not gonna go over in the interest of time today, is the component definition of dot product. So this is um, what I have presented here is what I like to call physics definition. And uh, I guess the difference between physics definition and the component definition of that product is physics definition is very easy to present in a, this a geometric way without ever having to define an axis. When you're using the component definition, you have to define an axis because you need the components. 